Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. So, are you able to see my screen in uh, presentation mode? Yes. All right. So, all right. Thank you. So, as uh, Hadija said, do, today we'll talk about uh, custom apps. So, the idea is that uh, we would want you to appreciate uh, various other ways where you can develop apps to fit various uh, use cases that are of interest to you. So we'll look at uh, custom tracker apps and also discuss a bit uh, about how you can go about uh, getting custom apps. And then we'll also look at the contact uh, tracing app. So we'll build a contact tracing map using the relationship uh, tracing app and also see how to generate a COVID-19 certificate using a COVID-19 certificate app. And then we also have a look at some other custom apps outside the healthcare domain, because I know the setup here is that we coming from different domains, not everyone is in health. So I think just to also emphasize that we can apply uh, tracker use cases in other domains and you can also develop uh, custom apps for other domains. So we'll look at uh, a couple of uh, custom tracker apps. So more especially we'll look at this from the uh, domain for an agricultural system. So if you may recall, uh, last week when we were talking about the various use cases, we also had one use case from agriculture. So I'll also just show you uh, one or two apps from there and explain the, the workings. So over the course of the academy, we've look at, uh, looked at different outputs. I think even like now in the recap with uh, Jean Paul, he was talking about, I think what we covered yesterday and we've looked at different uh, visualizations, ways of presenting data which are presented out of the out of the box so but then it may happen that in some cases you may want to process the tracker data in some ways that are not supported uh, outside the the box i mean out of the box and you may want to either present the data to fit a use case in a way that's not uh, immediately supported. So in, in such cases where you want to handle the data differently, present the data differently, or do different types of uh, manipulations, the DHIS2 platform provides you with capabilities to develop your own apps and then install them on the uh, DHIS2 instance, or you can host them outside the instance, but connect the apps with the DHIS2 instance that you're using. So as I've said, uh, these custom apps can be done to meet your various, very specific, context-specific um, use cases, as we'll see in a, in a short while. So the, the key thing uh, with developing custom apps and then linking them up with DHIS2 is that you can be able to leverage the key features that we've gone through over the, the past week. So you can have you know, a customization, meaning you don't have to develop everything from scratch. So you're able to leverage that power of DHIS2. But then beyond that, in using a custom app, you extend the capabilities of DHIS2 to, to fit uh, various use cases. And the custom apps can be handled in, in, in different ways. So some uh, develop some country teams or organizations do have developers on their on their teams. So in such cases, you you can uh, develop your own apps. Or where you're unable to, you can link up with um, 
other DHIS2 teams, like the other HISP nodes, to get some assistance. But also, even when you're able to develop your own apps, it's best to first check whether they aren't any already existing apps that you can leverage. Because I think one also one key thing with uh, custom apps is that if you use other custom apps that have already been developed and fit your use case, then you'd be able to save development time. And I think in our case for the work that we've done, we've benefited uh, quite a lot from using custom apps from the, the community. So where you want to search for these custom apps, uh, on the DHIS2 website, there's uh, the DHIS2 apps hub. So there you can see uh, custom apps that others have developed and uh, posted there. So in cases where you have capabilities, but the apps are not readily available, then you, you can go ahead and uh, develop your, your own apps. So we'll just go through a few custom apps from uh, different country use cases to see how custom apps can help you to get functionality that you can't get out of the box when you're using your uh, DHS2 tracker as you as you download it. So, for example, what, what you see currently on your screen are two vaccination uh, certificates. So these are two, these are being generated from custom vaccination certificate apps. So the one on the left is from the uh, Republic of uh, Vanuatu. So it's a custom app. As you can see, it's presenting data in a way that we haven't seen when using the custom uh, DHIS2 apps. But in presenting this data, so what the app is doing is to get data that's already been configured within the DHIS2 uh, COVID vaccine apps and then getting that data and rendering it in a custom way that's not already supported, but still leveraging and building on the, the DHIS2 uh, tracker app. And on the right-hand side, you do have also that other certificate. So I think that's uh, for the team in uh, West Africa. So they developed that app. And one thing that you can see here is that both of these apps are COVID-19 certificate apps, but they have a different look and feel. So this is also the flexibility that developing custom apps allows you. But at the same time, I think going forward, it's also possible to leverage uh, the various efforts into developing you know, a more unified app that can serve uh, multiple contexts. So I think you also, as I've said, have a feel of the uh, Uganda and uh, Tanzania COVID uh, certificate apps during the, the course of this afternoon. All right, um, another custom app that leverages uh, DHS2 tracker is uh, the COVID-19 relationships uh, app. So it analyzes the relationships. So for yeah, COVID-19 index cases and the, and the contacts. So the app that you see on the, on the screen, I think it's developed using R and outside uh, DHIS2, but links with the DHIS2 tracker to get the, the data and then do the uh, analysis as required. Uh, next, we have uh, this relationship uh, mapping app. So this app is available on the DHIS2 apps hub and we'll look at it. I think you'll possibly have a, a few during the, the course of the, the presentation. So what this app does as well is to map relationships based on uh, your, your definition of the, those uh, relationships based on what exactly it is that you're interested in. So on the app, as you see, you can, let's say, uh, click on the, the nodes. So the, the nodes represent 
entities that you're mapping. And then you'd have a pop-up of further information about that entity. And then you can also choose to open details of that particular entity in the uh, tracker capture app. All right, so, and here we also have another custom app, so, which is now doing uh, contact mapping. So I think like from the presentation yesterday, you, you saw that there was the, the, this layer and it was indicated as an experimental layer. So that functionality is building on from this sort of uh, custom apps. So you can start with uh, developing custom apps, like in this case, mapping uh, cases, on, on a map, and then that functionality can eventually also make it into the mainstream uh, DHIS2 platform if it's seen as uh, beneficial to a wider set of, of, of people. So I think that's it. Uh, that is the case with this uh, particular app. Okay, so in some cases, you may also want dashboards that present uh, data differently from the inbuilt DHIS2 dashboards. So uh, this is a dashboard from Lao. Was the presentation here does not represent the exact uh, disease burden, but it serves to show that you you can implement your tracker programs in DHIS2, as we've seen, but then develop your own uh, custom apps uh, for, for the dashboard to present the information in a way that you'd want to present that particular uh, information. So this is uh, what we're seeing here. So uh, that's about it. So next to look at uh, some of the, the custom apps. So I'll do a switch. Uh, any questions so far? All right, so we'll go ahead and look at the uh, relationship mapping app. So I'll show on the, on the screen, I think there's a, a link posted in the, in the chat for the demo instance, which you can follow. So as I said, you can, get also some apps from the DHIS2 app hub, but this has already been installed on uh, the instances that you, you'll be using. So when you go to the instance, you'd have this relationship uh, tracing app. All right, so when you open the app, if there's a visualization already created, so it would show there, but if there's no visualization saved, it will say uh, no visualization, and then you'd have to add new. But even when you have an existing visualization, you can already you can also uh, create new visualizations by creating on a new visualization. So I'll first open this uh, index case constants. Uh, I mean context, which I created earlier. So essentially the way the, the app works, 
is that you create, let's say, a, a mapping of uh, relationships based on relationships defined on your system. And then you select a period for enrollments that are supposed to be used in that uh, visualization. So I think I'll go to edit to uh, just show you the, the steps on the other side in terms of uh, what uh, can be done. So when you want to uh, create a relationship mapping, there, there are a series of steps that you have to go through. So first you have to give your visualization a name. So like in this case, we calling it uh, index case contacts because we want to link index cases to contacts. And then next you have to select the relationship that you want to use. So on this instance, I think we only have uh, this relationship has been in contact with defined. And next you add uh, templates. So the, the templates would be used to define the mappings that you're seeing on the on the relationship uh, mapping visualization. So at the very least, you need uh, at least two templates. So you, to create each of these, you tap on uh, like add template. So when you create a template, you have to give it a name. So in this case, we have this one, uh, code cases, and then you have to link it to a program. So we're saying we're linking it to the program uh, case-based surveillance. But if we had wanted something different, we would have mapped it to any of the other uh, programs. Okay, and then you can also tap on the same uh, add template to create the second template. So here we have the other templates uh, named contacts. So you can also change the, the, the colors used for the, for the template in, in the visualization. And then you also map that. So you can see that for the contacts, we're mapping that to the uh, COVID registration and follow-up program. Then if you want to display some information about the tracked entities, you can enable this uh, show node label. So for example, if I activate that, you see it activates this uh, node label attributes. So then from there you can uh, pick whatever attributes you want to display in the, in the visualizations. So in this case, I don't want to display anything, so I'll deactivate that. And then uh, the fourth step is to map the relationships like from which tract entity to which tract entity do you want? So in this case, we want to map our cases. Yep. So you, you can see here it says template flow and we want to map our cases to context. So on the from side would have cases on the template two, uh, then we have the context. And on step five, you can choose an, on whether you want to use, I mean, to hide instances that have no relationships or to show them, if you leave it blank like that, then it will also show the instances that have uh, no relationships. Then, you can also, if you want, use uh, bidirectional arrows. So in this case, I'll leave it, uh, let's say, with that it should show even the instances that have no relationships. So you can save. 
And then the next step is for you to then choose the period that you want to use for the um, enrollment. So the, the start dates and the end date for the enrollments that have to be used in the visualization. So, and then you can click uh, update. So here it's building the relationship graph, but you see that it says the, Uh, 1,301 cases and uh, 841 contacts. But within the period that I've chosen, these are not mapped. So you can see that I think at the center of the visualization, it seems there's uh, a red eye, if I may call it that, a red dot. So that's the only instance where we have the, the mapping. So instead of showing, let's say everything, if I were only interested in the, the mapping, then I can go back to the edit and then say uh, hide instances uh, instances with no relationships. So, and then save and update. So in, in this case, then I would only have that mapping uh, where we have the, the contact. So as I said, also when you tap on the contacts, the app brings you yeah, further details about that contact and the program to which they enrolled. So if we look at the, the case, you see it's coming from the case-based uh, surveillance program. And should you wish, you can also click on open in tracker capture to look at uh, further details in, in relation to that particular uh, tracked entity instance. Right, so I think that opens in um, a different uh, window. So let me just check that. But that's essentially uh, what the, the app does. It would open the details of that instance in, in a separate uh, window. So you can also go ahead and, 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 and try that. Oh, are there any questions? So you any questions? All right. So next to also look at the, or I can give you a few minutes to have a feel of the, the app. So when you're done, just give me a thumbs up and then we can move on to look at the COVID certificate apps. All right, if we together just throw a thumbs up in, in the... Maybe a question. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So when I did that, I can only see the two red uh, templates. I'm not seeing the relationship between a red and a blue. Why is that? When I finish my... Oh, my 
Okay, so uh, the, the likely thing is that in the period uh, selected on that instance, the, there is no uh, data on relationship for, for the contacts that, that are mapped. Or alternatively, you can, I think, also check the, the mapping of the relationship uh, template to see that, let's say, the one on the, the cases is being mapped to, to the case-based surveillance, and the one for the contacts is being mapped to the uh, contact tracing and follow-up instance. All right. Okay, so if possible, I, if, if possible, I can share the screen and. All right, or possibly, yeah, you, you can do that or we can, yeah, okay, just, just check. Tadis? Yes. So, well, yeah, okay. Well, possibly what we can do, we can go through the other apps because I think there's also some recap to be done and then you can just post it on the on the Slack and then I can follow up. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Sure. All right. So, I think next to look at the the COVID uh, certificate apps. So do you have uh, Prosper use either? And Prosper and the teaser team? Yes, we are here to work here. Thank you for the presentation and we can now hand it over to Walter Faustin from the Ministry of Health in Tanzania so that he could walk us through on different COVID apps that have also been used in Tanzania. Over to you, Walter. Thank you, Adija. As she introduced me, my name is Walter Michael Desanjo. I'm working with the government, of course, from Minister of Health. And one of my very key responsibilities is to oversee the development and implementation of ICT initiatives in the sector, in the health sector. So let me let me share my intro, my screen. Uh, share screen. Uh, this one. What? I think you, all of you can see my screen, right? So in Tanzania. What we are doing so far, uh, we, are, we decided to use Tracker into three different scenarios. Of course, the main scenario is COVID. But in the COVID, we decided to come up with like three customized uh, applications. Of course, all of, them, all of them we are using the same Tracker. Uh, one is called the uh, very famous here, it's called the Pima COVID of which anyone who wants to travel outside the country, they must undergo COVID test. So they are using uh, this customized uh, portal or application uh, to book for the date and of course place, a uh, facility where they want to go take this COVID test. Then after booking, I can demonstrate to you uh, just a few after, after my, 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 my uh, narration, of course. 
Uh, once they book, they receive uh, they receive control number, of which here in Tanzania all government payment they supposed to go through uh, our government electronic payment gateway. So they receive a special control number of which they are going to pay. After pay, they are going to take test. I mean, to collect sample or test for the testing. Then uh, track out, of course. Uh, 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 our staff they are using tracker now because customized way we've got the other mini manager uh, on the tracker they are using to key the results. Then uh, traveler will receive uh, his or her results via SMS and email. Once they receive the results, of course the results come in a in a, in a, in a, in a link way. So once they click the link certificate will pop up and they can use that certificate for their travel purpose. So then this certificate will go to special QR code, which contains special, I mean, which contains some details of, of uh, that certificate. So uh, this is just a photo or special app that is customized and is going, I mean, it, it, filling or push data to tracker but track are doing each and everything. So this is Pima COVID and we have got booking tests and certificate. So, and this is for public. So they just key their passport. Uh, this is black dummy, passport number. Then they search. Why do we say to put search? Because if somebody is already uh, in the system, it will already, the system will, will, will pop up that this booking is already there. So they select, uh, region, uh, of course, hospital, and the date. And they will fill other necessary informations like when do they expect to do this testing, they are sitting, of course, all the information. After filling, there is this, there, there this button, uh, which now is faint because I didn't fill some of the information. But when the form is already filled, this button will be uh, many, uh, blue. They will click, and the information now is will, they will be pushed into tracker. So let me go to to the manager portal to the tracker now. Uh, to the tracker now to the tracker to the manager portal. This one is called COVID booking. So. Uh, Sorry for my network, I think the network here is not stable. Okay, so once anybody book manager now, through the tracker, they can see the details and they will do whatever they're supposed to do. For example, uh, for this one, you can see if somebody is, is already paid, this one will give data that is paid and they can continue with other, with other, other actions like take sample, uh, after there, uh, putting results. But through here, they can even edit information, personal information, for example. If there's any mistake, they can edit the name, all other information, of course. Uh, then once they fill or enter results, then uh, tracker now will send the whole system will send the SMS to SMS and the email to travel. Another one is called the Afyam Safiri. Where is it? Afyam Safiri, this one. This one is now already mentioned, or uh, of course, it's already mentioned to all airlines. Now, here, if you want to come to Tanzania, you will not be able to check in without filling this form. Of course, it's a surveillance form, but we decided to tell many, we, we build it on tracker. So there's a uh, surveillance form. We are using almost the same way. You just key your passport number, then the form will pop up. So traveler must fill this form. Of course, we have the, 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 the mandatory fields and the other fields which are not mandatory. After filling the form, uh, they will get control number for the country that is already declared that it has got high, I mean, high, high infection or of course high, high probability of getting COVID. 
then they will pay either online or they'll come once they're in Tanzania, they will pay. And the same, the same way as we did in, uh, in, 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 as I said before, in COVID, after taking some point the results will be read, then they will receive email and the SMS. And let me concentrate to this one, it is called the Chanjo COVID. This is for vaccine. And I just want to stay here for some time. I think I don't know how many, how many minutes do I have? Like five minutes, right? Yeah, five minutes. 10 minutes, minutes there, there are very enough. Let me concentrate with this one. This one, now this is uh, special for vaccine. Of course, it is written in Tanzania, I mean in Swahili, Chanjo COVID, Chanjo to means vaccine, vaccination. So this photo is for public, they're just keen, they are, we have got many kind of, uh, we have got many types of, uh, of uh, ID, IDs. They can use my passport to anyone, any, 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 any ID. And of course, we've got even the, the one called the other. Of course, in Tanzania, some of our citizens, they don't have even ID. So we try to accommodate them also. So for example, passport and the king, let's say, uh, Tire, whatever number, then the then form will pop up. They'll key their information, and this one is special for booking for many for me for, for 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 vaccination. So if you want to go and take your vaccine vaccine, you need to go to this portal, fill your information. Uh, I'll show you like uh, yeah test. Rare to of course, need to be at least. Most of the vaccinations or vaccine, they require uh, people, person to be above 80, 18. Uh, what can this name? Gender, man. So these are very common information that you need to fill. And you must fill the proper, the proper, phone number and uh, email so that you can get uh, the confirmation message. And once you already receive your vaccine, your vaccine vaccination, then you will receive your results, I mean, your certificate via email and the, and the SMS also. So this is done, right? Uh, key form. So this is the vaccination day today. And we, what we did so far, we, uh, of course, we've got all the regions. So once you select the regions, it will pop up. The, the next field is going to be district, uh, respectively to the to the selected region. The same way to facility. So after finishing filling this form, the client, we normally call them clients, they will, you will, uh, they will receive SMS of, uh, which is like uh, booking uh, verification, booking that like, they'll, they'll be informed that you, have, you, you manage to book for vaccine on this date, this facility, I mean, this region, this facility, this is like a, a summary of the information, then in DHS now tracker, we already have these customized applications. As I said before, there are three. We have got COVID booking for, for, for travelers who are traveling outside the country. Uh, we have got traveler booking that this for this this is for travelers who are coming in the country and now we have got change of booking for vaccination so once so we have got uh, uh, managers who how many managers or who has I mean, all, all health workers who are already defined predefined that this one they are dealing with uh, with travelers or this one they are dealing with vaccine for example for this one, of course, because I'm there, it's, I've got a super user, I can see all of them. So this one is uh, vaccination or vaccine uh, manager. So health worker will see all the, I mean, all people, clients who booked the, 
uh, for vaccine in respective health facilities. For, for me, of course, I can see the entire country. So we can search, let's say we can search who Walter tests. We can search via ID, uh, reference, reference code, first name or surname. Let me use test. Let, let me test the, let me, let me, let me, let me search your surname, which is test. And now this is, you can see Walter, uh, whatever the, my information. After clicking, they're coming this page, which we have got two cards, we call them cards or process. We need to do uh, a clinical assessment. Then after clinical assessment, then we are going to do the actual vaccine, vaccination process in the system. But of course, this after vaccination, after the physical thing is done, then they come to the system. Right. So for uh, this clinical, it's just simple. Of course, they are very pretty. They are non -pred predefined questions. They observe. Of course, they can see the client. Let me do this like an example. Then they are going to this page. We have got all types of vaccination in the country for this COVID. So, for example, I can select JJ. And if you select any vaccination, any vaccine there are some fields that are going to be predefined, pre-filled, pre -filled, okay? For example, for Johnson, once you select Johnson, you mean from manufacturer is Johnson. Those number, one. Batch number, you selected. Then vaccination date, the system will give you the, according to, to the book, it will check, for example, you booked it for today. So it means you are, you're supposed to get vaccination today, or tomorrow, because it's today, then you support it, it, it will pop up, it will give you the, 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 the current date. For example, this one, then you save. Yeah. Is that this? No, it's um, it, it, yeah, you can see it from your, your, your screen, right? I think everybody can see my screen, right? Yes, we can see. Yes, we can see. Ah. So after completing this vaccination process immediately, a client uh, or so, who, who, I mean, client or somebody who's, who, who has got a uh, vaccine or who is vaccinated, he or she will receive SMS uh, of the SMS which contain link of his or her certificate. And certificate is like this one. So they will receive link. What they click that link is via whatever design device, if mobile phone or computer. It will pop up. Uh, uh, it will, once they click this link, the certificate will pop up. So the this certificate is they can print or they can save it anywhere. They have PDF or whatever uh, for their user. It, it, it depends uh, the user, of course. Some of countries right nowadays they want to they want to they want to get this certificate to, to verify if you already certified vaccinated. If you already receive your vaccine, then if there's something wrong with the network, the system also network is not on this table. If a client uh, does not receive SMS, there is this uh, button for resending. We can resend leave this link also. For example. He or she lost her phone or whatever in any hour. We can change the phone number, we can edit and we can resend the link. So, but this is all that we are doing all this in tracker. So many the tracker doing all this work. So far, we already customized according to the needs uh, of what we want to do. Uh, my colleague here told me that I've got three minutes. I think I can end it right now. Maybe I don't know if there's time for questions and discussions. I'll be around. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for the for the presentation. So I think that emphasizes, you know, that you can do a lot with Tracker through the use of uh, custom apps. And I think from this presentation, we've seen uh, examples of apps uh, sitting outside. Uh, and a DHS2 instance, but linking up with uh, the instance and, and using tracker data or apps installed on a particular instance and 
uh, directly connecting to the tracker. So I think we can take uh, one question in the interest of time, and then I'll just show uh, an app from the an agriculture use case, and then we'll move on to the rest of the agenda for the day. Yeah, so yeah, so thanks, Water. You may end the, the screen share. All right. All right. Sorry to one game. Yeah, sure. Before we move into agriculture, if we could give Prosper very few minutes to walk us through on the COVID part from Uganda. It's not going to take much of the time. Then once we, the, we could proceed with the agriculture part. Yeah, that's great. Prosper. Okay, yeah, no, yes. thank you very much. Yeah, thank you much, uh, very much to Wonge and, uh, and the Minister of Health Tanzania for sharing this. Yeah, basically, uh, what I'm going to share is related to uh, what the previous uh, uh, presenter shared. And uh, again, um, uh, Adija, if you can make me a co-host, then I should be able to share my screen. And, uh, Okay, good, good. Okay, so um, I, I want to take a lot of time through uh, the process of data entry. So this is um, uh, a public photo. I'm just sharing a public photo um, for, that is used by any vaccinated garden to be able to access their the certificate and uh, this will depend on uh, of course the vaccine if you're going for a one dose vaccine so it will be available so you've taken your, do your first dose j and j uh if you are for the two doses then you have to wait until you do your second dose and after second dose again it will give you uh, uh, so 14 days before you can be able to access it so um, uh, what the public is looking at every day is switched off the, uh, the screen. Yeah, so I'm going to take an example of, um, of a, a person who is just and quickly just show you, we just also basically collect basic information, your vaccination card number, who you are, your registration number, and your phone number. So what is very key is that uh, the number you provide during your vaccination and your phone number should be your key to getting um, uh, your certificate. And again, we will see that um, uh, for those who will be able to will be eligible for the certificate, they will go to this uh, public portal. Uh, this is a demo site here. So public portal, and then um, what you'll be asked to do, it's loading, of course, read the information, which we rarely read, uh, but you'll be requested to supply your registration ID that you uh, <coughs> that you did uh, uh, vaccinate with, and also the last six digits of your phone number uh, to be able to generate your certificate. So I'm going to take an example example of say somebody just coming here and say my my price of my registration number is that and then my phone number is one two three and then try to generate a certificate and um, so what this is doing is checking into the registration uh, registry the vaccination registry to see if you exist and then uh, for example that particular number was not there and you will not be able to get your certificate but we have this uh, pre-filled form that you can be able to provide information uh, for the central or, or um, customer care team to look at your details and see if you have challenges with your certificate but let me quickly just to show you how you can be able to generate a certificate that um, already exists uh, um, so, meaning that uh, this person will either receive the Swedenka and uh, after 18, uh, after 18, 12 weeks, 
it was able to receive the second dose and after 14 days is coming now to receive their certificate. So you will just have to input your ID, the way it is captured. It doesn't care whether it's your uppercase or lowercase. Then you put the first, the last six digits of your phone number that we that you used at vaccination. So this is the particular person. Then we also have this, um, at some point you may generate a certificate or you may uh, 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 generate a certificate and you see your date of birth is not correct because that has to match really with your passport because this certificate is used along with the passport. So you can be able to update your vital information by yourself, again, self-service. But let me see, generate a certificate. Now what it's doing is trying to go and query the tracker, the data that has been entered and then we'll be able to produce for you a certificate. So this is our certificate. You will see it has a unique identifier that is assigned to this by the system. Then it has a card, which is the paper, the paper record that you go with. Your names should be appearing here and your identification number should be there, your date of birth, and then clearly showing the two doses that uh, uh, you have received and from where, uh, and uh, from what batch, what vaccine, uh, the manufacturer, and also the facility or the place where you received it and in the district. So for both those one and those two, and this will only be generated for if you have the two doses. Then we have a QR code that of course has information about uh, yourself, very limited information that when scanned again, we are able to verify from the system again, if this is a genuine certificate. Uh, should you find that your date of birth was wrongly entered, which happens in some times, uh, because uh, the, the entrance could have estimated their date of birth and by putting in the, 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 the year, you can be able to come here and be able to change it to specify your, your date of birth properly, then you submit and the system will get updated and then you can be able to regenerate your certificate. So um, basically this is as simple as that, and this you can print, save on your phone, and then you move and you'll be able to scan this certificate, the QR code, and then the QR code will be able to link with the national registry and verify whether your record exists, and now bring more information uh, to, 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 this, to, to, to the, 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 the verification uh, point of entry. Thank you very much. Um, this is basically, again, a promotion of data used for the tracker. And uh, here we can see that we are even going beyond and bypassing the logins and so on, and be able to have the public be able to serve themselves with the certificates. Thank you very much. And that's all from the quick demo around the certificate in Uganda. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Prosper, that was quite insightful as well. So I, please go ahead, Hadija. Okay, please proceed. Okay. All right, uh, sorry. Okay, yeah, so uh, saying uh, that also just emphasized uh, quite well how using uh, custom apps we can fit particular uh, requirements for, for different countries. So I think I'll go ahead and just uh, show one uh, simple app, uh, two from the agriculture sector, and then we'll move on with the rest of the agenda for, for, for the day. Okay, so with the, like the agriculture use case, as I said, I think in the, in the webinar, is that each year, at least uh, for Malawi, you have what are called agriculture production estimate surveys. So where the country across all districts and levels of service delivery would look at what farmers are producing to determine whether the country is going to have enough food 
or, or not. So for, for this, this is a, a sample-based uh, survey. So when you look at, let's say the functionality out of the box with uh, the DHIS2, you, you can get a sampling out of the box. So for, for that purpose, we developed some apps uh, to facilitate the, the sampling. So like uh, on this instance, we have like what's called the uh, district block sampling app. So uh, the blocks are organization units like in, in agriculture. So the, the lowest level would be a block. And then we also have a household sampling app for sampling uh, households. So I'll go to the district uh, block sampling app. So at the moment, this is attached to a particular district. So like for use by a district uh, level manager. So what you have here, like on the left, the is in a way the organizational hierarchy below a district. So the EPA is an extension planning area. So the next immediate lower level after a district. And then EPAs are subdivided into sections which are then uh, subdivided into blocks. So at the, at the lowest level, uh, typically each section has eight blocks. So normally with the sampling, they're sampling about 25% uh, of the, the blocks in a, in a section. So to lessen the, the manual work that we did uh, this up. So at the moment it's tied to this, but it can be easily made uh, customizable so that, for example, one, you can pick the sample, uh, the, the interval and the starting point. So uh, click generate to generate, let's say a sample that then uh, frontline workers can use to, to get their work. So someone sitting at the district level would generate that and uh, send this list of sampled blocks to the uh, frontline workers to, to guide their work in terms of where exactly they're going to collect their, their data. So what you see here is that for each section, there are two blocks that are sampled. So from the stats says we have a total of 836 uh, blocks uh, and the, the sample is 209. So it's using an interval of four and the starting point of two. So the starting point is sort of like a wild card to say where from which serial number like here, yeah, are you going to start with the with the sampling so then from that you'd apply an interval four to select the next block and so on and so forth to generate that so from that you get this list on the on the left so the names and also the the system uh, ids so for for that list uh, one can then uh, download that as an as a CSV uh, file, so which you can open in, in Excel. And yeah, like that. Mato, please mute your, your mic. All right. Yeah, so one other thing that you can do with this uh, app, you have this assign button. So for, for Tracker, when you've developed the, the programs, you have to assign them to the uh, organization units that you'd want data to be collected for. So with this app, we have maybe uh, 20 something forms for this uh, graduate production estimate service. So instead of people manually assigning those forms, because you only want to assign the forms to only the sampled blocks, you know, just for data quality, so that people who are not supposed to run the sample are not entering the data. 
So also clicking on this assign will then automatically assign uh, required forms to these sampled blocks. So that way it means only the forms will only be available to these blocks that are going to participate in that uh, sampling activity uh, within this uh, particular year. Okay. Um, yeah. So then I'll. Yeah. So I think I will stop there in the uh, interest of time. But there are also other uh, apps. That, so, for example, one thing that we've seen in the configuration of dishes to tracker is some tasks are repeatable, but they take a lot of time. So like you can develop custom apps for that. Like we have an app for generating uh, program rule variables. So you can generate maybe all the program rule variables at the click of, of a button. Yeah. So I think I'll stop there uh, for the day and then thank you. Yeah, so um, are there any questions? We can take a question, otherwise I'll hand over to Hadija to continue with the rest of the program. Maybe to, to engage. Yes, I have I have put the question on the Slack, but I can also try for my using. So the, my question is: Are this uh, the sampling frame that you showed us, and the list? I mean, the sampling hierarchy and the uh, organizational hierarchy in the and the instance are they aligned? Oh, sorry, uh, I was muted, so I was speaking, I was muted, sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the sampling app just follows the, the hierarchy. So you can change to say, uh, let's say what hierarchy level you'd want to, to use for, for the sampling. So for the specific app where I, sh I showed you, the work is performed at the, the lowest level, that's the, the block level. So that's why we're doing the, the sampling at the, at the block level, but it will follow through from the, the, the district and then show you the, the, the block level. So it follows the, the actual hierarchy. I don't know whether that answers, answers your question. Yes, that answers. And the other question I have is, uh, if you have like, for example, we have a group or organizational group and you want to take a different sample from the two groups, does, does the app allow that? For example, there are, and in, your, in your example, for example, there are certain units where you have a separate uh, investment or intervention, and the other group do not have that. Uh, that type of study, you need a, a proportional sample from the two groups. Can we do that? Okay, so in its current form, uh, the app doesn't do that, but that's possible to do. So you can pretty much with these custom apps, you can work with all the kinds of metadata that you have within the HIS2. So for example, I think one other app that we I didn't mention, which we have is uh, like just managing, let's say, like user accounts and like assigning forms to, to users based on groups. So there we utilize a uh, user group. So it's possible in short to uh, sort of like tweak the app so that you can use groups and uh, provide some uh, criteria that you're interested in.
Yeah, thank you. Okay. So that's the end of today, the last day of the academy. And once you're through with submitting the, today's attendance, please go to the feedback and also provide the final feedback of the academy. Please make sure you provide your feedback because due to your feedback, it's when we can see how best we can improve uh, these course trainings and of course, uh, plan better in the coming trainings. So make sure that you provide your feedback. We'll have five minutes for lunch before we move into the last part of today's session. We really appreciate. Um, I know we started as a big number right from the registration. Uh, we started almost um, to a tune of uh, 200 people expressing interest to be able to participate in this academy. But as Adija will give you the statistics uh, of all that were accepted, I think we were able to come down to almost 80 or 70. But because of the challenges with work and probably connectivity and commitment, uh, we've seen quite a number of people dropping down, but uh, we do really appreciate. Uh, first of all, to the his Tanzanian team uh, for organizing, coordinating this academy. Uh, special thanks to Adija, uh, who has been behind you, responding to all your emails ever since we started planning this academy. We do appreciate that. Again, to the HISP Tanzania Management, uh, one of the HISP groups within the South and South and East, uh, South and Eastern Africa, uh, who, as we all know, uh, during our rotational um, academy hosting, uh, did accept to host this academy and um, we deliver it. Special thanks also to uh, the his groups uh, that have come uh, both physically in Dar es Salaam, as you can see in the room, uh, to be able to see how to facilitate this academy, but also in move on collaboration and coordinating and planning for the next academies we shall have in the, in the 2022. So you need to um, look out for our upcoming academies, especially in the region, so that you can be able to participate um, uh, in, in the areas where you would love to further build and enhance your skills in the DHIS to you. So special thanks to the HISP Uganda team that is here and uh, back um, in, in in, in Uganda that has been for a week. Special thanks to the His Rwanda team that has both were physically here and also back home. Special thanks to our other His groups, His HISP Kenya and His uh, Malawi, who have been who have really been online all the time and uh, and most of you may not be even aware that you know this academy was not only running for the three hours that you've been on. So the team starts early and sleeps late, uh, trying to really uh, review your comments and also plan for these academies. Um, apologies will be given uh, by our host uh, team, and here we're looking at his uh, Tanzania uh, for all the um, things that did not go well. I will leave that up to us. 
I want to congratulate uh, all of you. Uh, I know by the fact that you've been able to go through the five days, it, it's been a great achievement, both on your side and also on, on our side. We really want to appreciate all of you, uh, especially the ones that are still with us, uh, the 50 plus that are still online, uh, for all the dedication, the time you put in this. And, we, and I do hope and uh, I do hope that uh, what you've been able to learn during this academy will be utilized. Uh, again, as a, his, as a DHIS2 community, we don't only stop at academies. Uh, I would really encourage you that you uh, go ahead and sign up to the community practice and we could be able to keep interacting and, and chatting with you uh, in, in case you uh, experience any challenges as you use DHIS2. So I do encourage and urge all of you to really join the community of practice so that we can continue from, from here. I, I also encourage you to, uh, to follow up on the social medias or the DHIS2, there is a DHIS2 very active uh, Facebook page it gives a lot of information that um, um, uh, talks about what is being done with DHIS2 and how you can be able to use it differently. And, for, and lastly, I also encourage you to subscribe to our, our monthly newsletters that do bring us uh, some of the work and the implementation that are going around in the, country, in the countries, but most importantly on the enhancements and the, and the improvements in the DHIS2. Uh, you will be able to see that every time DHIS2 is released, they are quite good functionality. Uh, uh, for some of you who have not watched this, the space uh, 2.37 is out with great features, especially in the data use. So uh, take time to look at that. Uh, with those few many words, um, allow me to really um, stop here and uh, and. Uh, Thank our facilitators, um, the course uh, materials has been all behind. Um, we may have, you may be seeing a small group here, but behind all this, it's been all many man hours of trying to bring this academy together. So to you all the best in using the utilizing and using the information that you have learned in this. And also please keep uh, giving the feedback in terms of what improvements you want to see uh, so that they can be able to be considered in the next uh, uh, DHIS2 uh, development, core development. Otherwise, uh, to the team in Tanzania, Asante Sana, and uh, we hope and wish to commit that we will keep working as the DHIS2 uh, community in the East and Southern Africa to, to deliver the best uh, of what we know and what we've implemented. Thank you very much. And I will pass it over to our host, uh, Dr. Wilfred Senyoni, uh, to also give the remarks and officially close the academy. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Prosper de Humbeza, for those nice words. Um, you have covered most, or, or I would say all of our uh, issues which, um, which are necessary on this closing stage. Um, but nevertheless, let me also um, thank everyone, especially our participants who have been uh, very active uh, throughout the five days of the academy, but also the two days of webinars which we had uh, last week. Um, we start with a big number, but um, of course the number has dropped, but uh, at least I've seen that uh, um, 50, um, at least 50 participants had attended the exam. So that's a, that's a good number, which I would like to take an opportunity to thank you all uh, to attend. I see other, other participants are actually either on the lab or in the office right now, you know, attending this particular academy while, while you are doing other work. So that shows um, the energy, the level of effort which you've put uh, through attending this academy. So we thank you um, for, for that energy and level of effort. And also, as uh, Prosper said, we hope that uh, the knowledge which you have um, um, generated or uh, gathered here, you are going to um, use it in your own um, organizations, in your own implementations, 
And whenever you uh, need support, the uh, HESP community uh, is there for you, or you are welcome to share, um, you know, your experience, but also your questions to the community and uh, the community, uh, the, the, the large community of HESP uh, we'll uh, see how we can uh, help you out. So that's uh, that's one. But two, I would like also to thank this team of facilitators who here who have uh, traveled. Some have traveled um, uh, the whole night to to to, to be here uh, in Tanzania, Dar es Salaam, um, even during this um, uh, pandemic um, uh, times. But uh, we have seen that this is an important event where we can meet around. Um, um, you know, lock some heads and also provide, um, uh, you know, provide this academy to you all guys. So I would like to thank all the uh, facilitators who are here physically uh, from his Uganda, um, from uh, his Rwanda, but uh, also I would like also to thank our facilitators who have been, uh, um, you know, uh, facilitating virtually uh, and there have been our, our quality checks control in terms of what is going on here. Uh, so team uh, HISP uh, Malawi and also uh, HISP uh, Kenya and, and the uh, facilitators from HISP Uganda who uh, remain in Kampala. So that's, uh, that's uh, one thing we wanted to add. So uh, we also like to thank um, some of the uh, members from uh, University of Oslo who have been part and parcel of this facilitation process. Um, uh, the first day we had a couple of team members uh, from the uh, University of Oslo, but uh, throughout this whole academy, we have been collaborating with the University of Oslo to make sure that uh, we deliver high quality training. So we like to uh, take this opportunity to thank them to, 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 to be with us and also to collaborate with us in organizing this academy and uh, delivering this academy um, uh, in, this, in this way. So we like to take that opportunity. Um, otherwise, I think um, the time has gone by. Uh, we would like to say that uh, we are not really closing this academy, but we are joining it to the next one. And uh, please keep tabs to the, uh, our DHS2 Academy page. There'll be a lot of um, 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 academies from uh, next year where the team will be planning. So please keep, um, keep your sights on this particular DHS2 web page where you'll see um, what we have planned for uh, East, Southern, and, and Africa in general. So without, uh, with that, I would like to say thank you very much. And uh, we uh, let me first of all welcome Hadija before we close, officially, officially close. But uh, Hadija, if uh, our academy coordinator if she has any final words before we finally close the uh, academy thank you wilfred <clears throat> and thank you everyone for joining us for all the days that uh we are scheduled for you to be with us so that we could have the training uh i'll just have to let you know that for those who did not manage to take the exam today due to any of the reasons please kindly drop an email for us uh, and we can see how best we can accommodate you so that you could also take your final assessment. Yes, thank you Hadija, uh, our fearless uh, academy coordinator. <laughs> yes, <laughs> actually yes, we would like to thank Hadija for our uh, efforts coordinating this and putting this together. Uh, she really has um, uh, worked hard to make sure this academy becomes a reality. So thank you, Adija, for um, that effort you put in. So without further ado, please let me um, um, do we want to hear one final word from our participant before we close? Yeah. Do we um, yeah, I see Freddie Luima clapping. Do you want to say anything, Freddie, before we close? Yes, Freddie. Uh, I, I just want to say thank you for organizing this training. And uh, I was wondering when do you plan to arrange for the Configuration Academy? The one for track. 
Yeah. So that we could be somehow complete when it comes to track and knowledge. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Um, the regional team is going to sit around uh, in the couple of uh, next weeks, uh, coming weeks. Um, they will uh, deliberate on the coming academies for 2022. And these academies will be posted on the DHS2 web. So uh, we encourage you to visit that particular page, um, um, you know, and get the information for the latest academy, especially that DHS2 tracker configuration, because we also see that uh, there's a high demand of this particular academy. So we look forward to um, uh, post this information soon in our DHS2 academy page. Uh, and also, uh, we might also. So communicate this to our participants if that is possible through our academy coordinator. So um, please keep in touch on uh, on our DHS2 web page, uh, academy web page. Um, yeah, just a little bit of prolonging a little bit. Maybe just uh, one facilitator from virtually if they can uh, say one final word before we close. Uh, we have Tibonge from his Malawi. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone. I think thanks uh, the HISP teams in, in DA. Uh, thanks for the hard work you've put into this. And also for the participants, I think thanks for the, the hard work. It, yeah, I've, I've loved being part of this for, for this week. Also learning from the various experiences. I've also picked you know, a few nice new things and also made some new contacts as well so yeah let's keep in touch and looking forward to more fruitful uh, collaboration going forward so thanks everyone thanks uh dr tiwonge um thank you everyone and um this is for us here in uh Dar es Salaam saying bye 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 <laughs> Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. You can unmute. You can talk Bye. to your friends. It is uh, now open. <laughs> we we will open if you thank want you. to chat and talk. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.